Hey Retro Food fans, today is a very special collaboration and I am finally going to answer all of your requests for a very special dish. You're going to love it. Let's get started. Hey everyone, this is Yester Kitchen and I'm Jill. Thank you so much for being here. Today I am part of an awesome collaboration called Quarantine Cooking. The only rule here is that we needed to make a dish for you with things that we already have in the house because we're all stuck in the house. I've been having serious withdrawals. I haven't been to a market in like two or three weeks and I'm dying, but I got you covered. So I want to thank the Kitchen Queers for putting this together and if you haven't seen their channel, you should. So ever since my channel began, I've been getting requests for meatloaf. Yep, meatloaf. And I just, I, it just took a while to really find something that I really wanted. And when this collaboration came about, I thought, this is perfect. I have the perfect recipe. But before I get started, you know I've got to tell you the story of where meatloaf even came from, how it got to America, and how it became our quintessential comfort food. So meatloaf was thought to have been created in the 4th or 5th century. Yes, it's that old. There is evidence that there's dishes of chopped up meat with nuts and spices and fruits put together. And that's the beginnings of meatloaf, which is not too far from what we have today. So now we're going to go way into the future, well, the 1700s, where it's thought that the German immigrants brought their version of meatloaf to America, which was either in the form of scrapple or getta. And if you want to know more about that, I have you covered. But in the meantime, people were, you know, think, hey, this is pretty good. It's just in, it's in a loaf, it's easy to make, it's very customizable, and it stretches your meat, whatever type of meat you may have. But everything really changed in the 1800s during the Industrial Revolution. So many amazing inventions came out of that time, but for our purposes, the most important one was the meat grinder. Oh yes, the meat grinder. Because now you didn't have to sit and chop meat and it took forever. Now you can just, it, it would pre, the early ones were very rudimentary and it did take some work to grind the meat, but you could grind the meat, which made a gateway to the meatloaf, which was every housewife's dream because it was such an easy, easy dinner for her to fix for her family. One of the very first documented recipes for meatloaf was in the 1870s and it really called for ground, any meat you have, with milk-soaked bread, eggs, salt, and pepper, which is clearly meatloaf. Now, it really became popular during the Depression. Food was very hard to come by, and people literally just had scraps of this and scraps of that, and by turning it into a meatloaf, they could make something pretty good for their family. I mean, now we have markets. We can get food. We are doing so much better than the Depression. But back then, I mean, really, what all anything they had is anything they had, and they turned it into meatloaf, and it really, really was a saving grace, and really got into the American culture, because everyone can customize it for the different meats, the different spices, the different whatever they have on hand. And then in World War II, it became popular all over again, because food rations. As a matter of fact, I have a couple war ration stamp books to share. See, you could actually had to go to the market with these things and give your stamps in order to buy certain groceries, you were very, very limited. If you're actually interested in World War II food ration cooking, I've got you covered there too. But every housewife made meatloaf, every family had meatloaf, and everybody had their own different versions of meatloaf. And coming out of World War II, meatloaf was just part of our culture. It became the quintessential comfort food. It was in TV dinners, right? <laughs> it was in every restaurant, it was in every diner, it was in every house, it was everywhere. So meatloaf today is just part of our culture, part of our Americana, and I am gonna make an amazing meatloaf for you right now. It comes out of 1958, and it's actually a barbecued meatloaf, and I, yes, I made it with everything I already have in the house. Hopefully you do too. It's a pretty simple recipe, but really a delicious one. Okay, so the first thing is my oven is on 350. It's all warming up. Now, I've got a happy little bowl. And in my happy little bowl, I have one pound of ground beef. I like grass-fed organic, but you can use whatever you like. And to that, we're gonna add three quarter cups of breadcrumbs. I actually grind my own breadcrumbs. Whenever I have the ends of the bread or a bread that's just starting to go that no one's eating, I throw it in a blender, I grind it up, I throw it in the freezer. They're so much better than dried breadcrumbs, but if all you have are dried breadcrumbs, absolutely use them. To that, I'm gonna add one slightly beaten egg. 
a tablespoon of parsley, chopped up, three tablespoons of water, and a teaspoon of salt, and a quarter teaspoon of freshly ground pepper if you can. I always like freshly ground, it just tastes so much better. Three tablespoons of horseradish, so yes, it's gonna have a little kick. And of course you have horseradish because you're making those Bloody Marys while you're stuck at home, aren't you? And three tablespoons of finely chopped onion. Now I'm going to take my ring-free, impeccably clean hands because it just works so much better. And you're going to mix that all up. And you just want everything all together. Meatloaf, see, see what I mean by how customizable it is? By the time the 50s got a hold of it, oh. Meatloaf was just everywhere, and everyone was doing their own thing from it. And so many flavors, and so many favorites. Okay, now you're gonna take your meatloaf, and you're gonna bring in a greased baking sheet. I always line my baking sheets with tin foil because I don't like to clean them. You can do whatever you want. And you could put in a loaf pan, but this particular recipe calls for just creating a loaf right on your cookie sheet, which is just what we're gonna do. So you can make it just however you want. Because you're only using a pound of ground beef, this is really just gonna serve four people. And I really think it's gonna be too little for a loaf pan. Anyway, we got our perfect, happy little meatloaf here. And now we're gonna make the barbecue sauce. Okay, so we're gonna get our meatloaf out of the way. And we're gonna bring in a little pot. Okay, and on a medium high heat, we're gonna start with a half a cup of chili sauce. You know the kind, it's, it's, it's like a little spicy ketchup. If all you have is ketchup, you can use ketchup, but the chili sauce gives a little extra kick, you know, to kind of match with the horseradish. And then we have a teaspoon of Worcestershire, three tablespoons of steak sauce, you know the kind, A1, or it's generic. And then we have a half a teaspoon of dry mustard, which is a very, very popular 1950s ingredient. We're gonna do a few shakes of, I like Tabasco, whatever hot sauce you like. And finally, we're gonna add a quarter teaspoon of liquid smoke. So if you don't know what liquid smoke is, it's by a company called Wright's. It will last you forever. It's very strong. So you only want a tiny bit, which is why we're only using a quarter teaspoon and that will be enough. Actually, as soon as you pour it into your bowl, you will start smelling hickory all over your kitchen. It's actually quite fabulous. And then all you're gonna do is just warm it for a couple minutes, which is pretty much now. Clean up, bring back my meatloaf. And then you're just gonna cover your meatloaf with this amazing, very quick, six ingredient, hopefully you have them all, barbecue sauce. Just like that. And it is gonna get all over the place and be just, make you so happy. Okay, all that's left to do is to put this beautiful thing in the oven, again, 350, for one hour, and I'll be right back when it's done. Okay, it's been an hour, and it's done. Take a look. Is this gorgeous? It is just the perfect size meatloaf for the perfect dinner. I'm gonna make some mashed potatoes tonight, and this is gonna be dinner for me and hubby. It definitely has a kick, because you've got the Tabasco, you've got the horseradish, you've got the chili sauce. It's wonderful. And this is the reason I always use tin foil. Now it's just toss and put away. Thank you so much for joining me. And if you're new, if you like retro cooking and all the stories that go behind the dishes, check out my channel. I have so many stories up there. And be sure to check out everyone at hashtag quarantine cooking. All kinds of great ideas for everything that hopefully you already have in the house. So now I can't wait any longer. Let's cut into this. Oh my goodness. This is just so beautiful. So perfect. And there's a little meatloaf. It's totally 1950s. 
and totally good. It's not overly sweet like a lot of meatloafs can be because you have all those spices in there. It's actually a little different and just perfect. I hope you try it. If you would like to explore more dishes from your childhood or just the past, I invite you to subscribe. I release new videos every Friday. In the meantime, here's some more retro dishes for you. And remember, every dish, even the classic quintessential American comfort food known as meatloaf, has a story. <laughs> I'll see you in the next video.